Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of the navigation component tutorial. Now we want to add a second destination and navigate to it when we click this button here. So let's go back into our project and create a second fragment. So again we start with the fragment layout, new layout resource file. We call it fragment underscore login. And again we will use a simple linear layout. We click OK. Switch to the split view, rearrange the attributes, set the orientation to vertical, which is already set here, and again the gravity to center. And this time we will also need a padding of 16 dp. And then in here we want to add two edit text fields where we type in our uh, imaginary username and password and another button which will later bring us to the third fragment. So let's add this use here. Opening angle bracket edit text, match pound width, wrap content height. In this video, these views will not have any use yet. We will use them in the next part. However, we can already add them to the layout. Um, this one will have the idea edit text username with underscores like this. And we set a hint which is the little text that will be shown when the field is empty here, username. Let's copy this for the second one. Change the ID to edit text password. And this will say password. Okay. And then below we will add a button, which will later bring us to a third fragment. Wrap content width and height. The text will say confirm and the id will be a button underscore confirm all right i give you a moment so you can type it out and when you've done this before we forget it we also add the tools colon context attribute again we have to import this alt enter and set this to a Log and fragment to later associate the layout in the nav graph with the right fragment. We haven't created this fragment yet, so this should be red. I made a typo here, it's context. Now this is red because we haven't created it yet. We will do this next. So let's actually just copy and paste our home fragment because they will look the same for now. So control Z, control V. We change this to a Lock in fragment and click OK. But of course, instead of fragment home, we want to use the fragment lock and layout. This fragment won't contain any logic yet. We will add this in the next part. We just want to navigate to it for now. So let's go back to our nav graph and add a second destination, our fragment lock in. Put it here. We can also click this button up here, which will put them in a good place for a good overview. And now notice that this login fragment doesn't have a home icon, because this is not the starting destination. If we wanted to start on the login fragment when we open our app, we can click this icon up here to change the home destination. But we want to start at the home fragment. And there can only ever be one home destination in one graph. And now to add the navigation path from the home fragment to the login fragment, we click on this little circle here and drag an arrow over to the login fragment. This is called an action. An action basically defines a navigation path. And to an action, we can add different attributes. So you have to make sure that you click on it and it's actually highlighted. And then the right side should look somewhat like this. And one thing we can do with actions is adding animations to them, animations for how we navigate between these fragments. We can do this over here in this animations field. Enter anim is how this fragment comes onto the screen. So we want to have it move from, uh, it's, it's uh, the opposite direction for you because you uh, see me in the camera, but we basically want it to come from the right and move to the left. And we want the old fragment to uh, move out to the left. Again, I have prepared these animations in the anim folder over here. You can copy them from the GitHub link below. And then here we add slide and write. 
So add enum slash slide and write for enter enum. For exit enum, we'll use slide out left. And the pop enums are the opposite direction, basically when we click the back button. Then we want to have it slide in from the left and slide out to the right. So just enter these exact animations here. However, this only defines a navigation path. To actually execute this navigation, we still have to write some Kotlin code. And we want to do this when we click a button, the login button in our home fragment. So let's switch over to our home fragment class. And here we overwrite on viewer created. Because in this method, we can execute code once our fragment layout was inflated properly. And here we want to use our button login. In Kotlin, we can just reference the ID of this button directly. We want to set an on click listener. And here we want to navigate to the second screen. But before we can do this, we have to compile our project because we are using the SafeArx plugin and it needs to generate some code, which only happens at compile time. So um, we click up here to build and on rebuild project. Then we wait a short moment until it's done. Then we create a variable, which we call action. The name doesn't matter, but this is just convention. And then if you have compiled the project properly and you have added the SafeArx plugin, it should have created, it should have generated this class here, home fragment directions. And when we write dot, we should see this um, action method. Action home fragment to a login fragment. This method name is generated from the idea of the action we created, which you can see up here. Home fragment to a login fragment. Just that this one has underscores and this one is camel case. And then we have to call find nav controller, which is a Kotlin extension function on the fragment class. We also have this method available in activities. If you use Java, you won't have this extension function available. Instead, you have to use navigation UI and then this one should have a find nav controller method. We will use more of these extension functions in future parts and I won't always explain the difference. So if you use Java, you have to look into the documentation, how this stuff works. Anyway, on this one, we call .navigate and pass our action. And when we execute this, we will move to our second fragment with the animations we defined in this action in the nav graph. Now, instead of passing an action like this, we can also pass the idea of an action or even a destination here directly. However, then we won't have compile time safety because when we use this approach up here and we later add arguments to this navigation path, then this code will not compile when we forget to add these arguments. When we use IDs, we don't have this compile time safety and our app could actually crash when we try to navigate at runtime without the appropriate arguments. So you should use um, this approach up here with the generated classes, which belong to the SafeArx plugin. And this is all we have to do to navigate to our second screen. And the navigation component will handle the back stack and everything for us. So generally we only have to call find nav controller navigate and the difference to the old approach really gets more visible when you have many def uh, different destinations and many different places where you navigate between them. So let's start it and see if it works properly. When we click the login button, we move to the second screen with this nice animation and the back button works as well. Now, as you can see, there are still some elements missing. We don't have our back button yet, for example. We will implement that later. In the next part, we will learn how we can send data between fragments. So when we type something in here, we will send it to the third fragment. So stay tuned for that and take care.